Hello guys, so how is everything with you? Is everything okay? Uh, my name is Davi Vega, in Portuguese they call me Davi, but I think in speaking English countries you can call me David. Uh, I'm trying to talk in English today and doing this presentation because uh, instead of speaking in English, I wish I could uh, do this video or make this video talking in French, but I'm still learning French, so I'm not gonna try to talk in a language that I'm not very self-confident uh, yet. But uh, I'm gonna talk about a famous leader. You guys know me uh, and you guys know that I like and love history. I'm not a historian. I just, I'm just a guy who loves history and what uh, can we see in the present that still survive from the past and what we can predict to the future of course uh, it's it's uh, it's not certain when you try to do like a future prediction based on the present but the present you can make something uh, like closer to that if you know the past if we know the past, we can understand ourselves and we can uh, draw ways to follow for the future. The future is uncertain, of course, but if we have a very well-known pres uh, present uh, uh, and today, of course, uh, we can just make this uh, strategy for our lives, our personal lives, or even a country can do that to have big and better results based on history and on the events of the past. So today I'm gonna talk about Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon Bonaparte that we call in Portuguese, but uh, it's a very contra con it's very contradict because I'm talking in English and the arch uh, arch enemy of Napoleon Bonaparte was the UK was United Kingdom and British and French they have <coughs> uh, like a uh, rivalry from not from not from nowadays like you know, we know that since the uh, the Middle Age they are fighting and they compete because they have the the Man uh, the Mancha Channel that separate the the island of United Kingdom from the rest of the Europe from the continent and in that uh, short uh, ways away of sea that separate the the continent from the from the island uh, lots of people coming even through uh, England they try to colonize France we have the Normandus, that, that's why we have the Normandy in the north of France. We have the, uh, even the British, the Bretons, the Britons, they, they try to invade France. And even Charles Magno, né? Carlos Magno, uh, and, and Charles Martel as well, Carlos Martel, they, they had like a, not like an empire, but they could save France from the Muslim invasions and they try to reach the to reach the the island of United Kingdom as well so it's not from nowadays that they have this fight we have the 100 years war uh, the 100 years war and especially during the time of Joan of Arc Joana d'Arc that we call in Portuguese uh, uh, British and French they were fighting each other and competing from for the hegemony of Europe and especially in the 19th century when you have the imperialism especially when they colonize Africa and Oceania the uh, Spain Portugal they weren't uh, big potent big big uh, empires anymore they weren't big empires anymore and you have uh, another actors and the main actors 
uh, especially from Europe, uh, were uh, 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 France and England. They were competing each other to see who, who, who was going to rule the world. Of course, we had other nations as Belgium and in, the, in Asia, Japan, after they industrialized Japan, when they opened the ports and the harbors to the west, they were colonizing other countries as well, and the rest of the history everybody knows. The wars that we have, the First World War and the Second World War. But before all of that, we had Napoleon Bonaparte. So, Napoleon Bonaparte, he was born in, a, in an island uh, called Corsica. In Portuguese we call Corsica as well. And this island they ha they, they has a very strong Italian influence. So, Napoleon Bonaparte, even his last name Bonaparte, it's a uh, Italian de de descent. He he has a he he had a Italian descent, but the island were, was ruled by France and became part of France and the, or, and part of the French Empire later. But in his early years, uh, in his first years, he was. Uh, influenced by a very strong uh, separate, separatist uh, feeling. He, he wanted to, to have a independence of Corsica from France and even from Italy. But he used the, the argument that the, uh, they were like more Italians than French and France they were oppressing the Corsican people, but by the time passed when he went to when when he entered in the when he enlisted in the French army, he became to develop a very strong nationalist uh, feeling for France. So he became a, a French nationalist. So in his first years in the early age, he was a separatist, separatist, but then he became a very strong nationalist, French nationalist. And this happened even in my country, Brazil, because we had a, uh, we have a, uh, in the south side of Brazil, of uh, the Maragatos, they were like very influenced by separatist movements, independent movement. But it's the place of Brazil, it's the area of Brazil that we produced the biggest nationalist, Brazilian nationalist that we had in our uh, political history such as Getúlio Vargas. Getúlio Vargas was gaúcho from the south of Brazil, but he was from a nationalist Ximango, what we call Ximango tradition of, our, of my country. And it was very similar what happened to Napoleon Bonaparte. Bonaparte, he enlisted in the French army and he became... Uh, he, he raised uh, very fast from, from the ranks he was he began as a soldier and then he 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 grew a lot, uh, very quickly uh, rank by rank in the French army and when he uh, when he was 24 years old he was already a military leader and he was uh, enlisted in the French artillery and he was designed to protect Paris. So Napoleon Bonaparte had his career related to Paris, to the French capital. He was serving Admiral Hood uh, army. It was a very famous military leader of that time. And he has a very, he has a, how can I say, all the ideals of the French Revolution that we had a century before especially in 1789 to from 1789 to 1799 when you have the the period of the assembly the french assembly especially in 1790 after 1790 so all the all the the political reforms that they were making in france influenced uh, napoleon bonaparte napoleon bonaparte he was uh, Republican and he had lots of 
critics to the monarchy but in, an, in the other hand different from uh, what the common sense says he wasn't against religion uh, in France they they were having uh, politics of secularization they were uh, removing religion from the public places they were forbidding uh, people to go to the church even Notre Dame the Notre Dame uh, church they were planning to destroy the Notre Dame church and it was Napoleon Bonaparte that uh, didn't want that and could save even the uh, the religious monuments of Paris he was very ahead from this his time because he was for example in favor of free speech especially the free speech of religion and he allowed even the Jewish to have their beliefs uh, in France, living in France, especially uh, allowing them to have synagogues, for example, synagogues, and uh, could, could doing their their masses and all these kind of things. They, they could have their 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 religious uh, manifesto, for example, in a in a country that they had like a, a constitution not based in the in Christianity because he allowed different views and of creeds and religions but uh, we had a problem uh, years later especially in when you have for example the anti-semitism after, after the Dreyfus uh, calls in, in France in, at the end of the 19th century but at the time of Napoleon Bonaparte, religion was being respected, people, they were respecting religion of the people, and so he was a democrat in this, in this issue, for example. And what else? Uh, even for education, the Sorbonne, the Sorbonne it, uh, University was, uh, was closed since the, ti the times of the revolution, and Napoleon Bonaparte, he reopened the Sorbonne, and he invested a lot in education so he was a guy that uh, people compare Napoleon Bonaparte to Hitler but I don't I don't do this this uh, association because Hitler was uh, had a project based on the military domain uh, and, and Napoleon Bonaparte of course he was a general he was a military but the the notion of conquest of Napoleon Bonaparte was very close. I'm not saying that is the same, but was very close to the Roman uh, conquest. When you just have like influence from another uh, and a new type of government in certain country, but you don't uh, destroy the local tradition. You just uh, transform the local tradition. Uh, assimilated, assimilado, what we call, assimilated to the new regime or the new uh, philosophy of government that was the republicanism. For Napoleon Bonaparte was republicanism. That's why he did a reform, especially in the royal houses of almost whole Europe. Uh, when he invaded, for example, Spain in 1808, in 1808, the, the Madrileños, the Spaniards from Madrid, they resist the Napoleon Bonaparte troops, but the Spain was converted to the new regime, the republicanism, uh, and, and, and not, uh, not as a republic, but they, they did a transformation of the royal house, especially for the Bourbon, for the Bourbons, and the, uh, the, the royal house of Austria, the Habsburgs in Spain, they were uh, affected by that. And Napoleon Bonaparte, he let his brother controlling and ruling Spain. He was ruling Spain. And he tried to do the same in Portugal. But the Portuguese royal family, they left Lisbon and they came to Brazil. Uh, it was the only uh, royal family in history that 
came to a colony and Brazil was a Portuguese colony at that time and and our country Brazil started to have a public, a public administ administration and all uh, the build, uh, starting to build, started to build the state after uh, Don Juan, né? Don John the sixth came to Brazil with the royal family. I'm not talking about uh, the poli uh, the military conquest of Napoleon Bonaparte because you all know that he went to Egypt. And, and when when he went to Egypt, one of his soldiers or rook or or one of one one of his followers discovered uh, the translation of the hieroglyphs, and uh, it was François Champollion, and the hier hieroglyphs were uh, discovered by him, and he went to try to invade Russia, and he lost in Russia as 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 like like Hitler did. In the Barbarossa uh, operation, in the invasion of the Soviet Union, and uh, he lost it in Waterloo, and he was he he went to an uh, an exile in the island of Elba, and he died, I guess, if I'm not wrong, in Santa Helena. But uh, when he was in the island of Elba, he was rescued by his supporters, and he did kind of like kind of like a new revolution in France and he put it a crown in himself as the emperor of France and the whole Europe so his republicanism it wasn't like a democracy that we understand nowadays but it was very similar to a new uh, monarchy based on republicanism and this happened a lot because if you see the Roman Republic is very different from the presidential republic of the United States and even our presidential republic, Brazilian presidential republic of nowadays. But uh, once something very interesting of Napoleon Bonaparte and that he used it to to do a lot of plebiscites, the plebiscites that in our presidential uh, system we we do this these plebiscites when we have to consult the people and I think in the United States you have the same uh, the same uh, system when you want to consult to do a public consult of certain uh, action of the government and so on so that's uh, what Napoleon Bonaparte contributed to the world uh, I'm not talking about the military ways but uh, he left uh, a guy that followed him and he was his nephew Louis Bonaparte the, the Napoleon III that many many people call him a, a despotic leader and a dictator especially Karl Marx in that uh, book famous book the 18th Brumary of Napoleon Bonaparte but uh, Napoleon Bonaparte we ha uh, sorry Lu Louis Bonaparte we have to recognize that he made all the reforms of Paris. So if Paris is a very beautiful city nowadays with the boulevard, all the museums, not only the Louvre, but other museums, and an open-air museum with the monuments, especially uh, not only the Champs-Élysées, but even in the Sacré-Cœur in Paris and all these places, we have to recognize that was Louis Bonaparte that did all these changes in Paris, making Paris the the capital, the cultural capital of the world, and especially through the 19th centuries and the beginning of the 20th century. And many intellectuals and artists they went, they used to go to France because it was the cultural, the cap, the cultural capital of the world, and they they were invaded and defeated by the Nazi Germany in 1940 and this was a very uh, symbolic uh, event uh, of the in barbarians invasions of the civilized world what we can say because they, the French they always uh, considered themselves the, 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 
the people that has the heritage of the uh, of the civilization and even Napoleon Bonaparte they had the Napoleon code uh, for the the especially for the the laws and all these kind of things that the Napoleon code he considered himself the guy that continues with the Roman law uh, the Roman law based in the individual uh, in the indiv individuality in the individual uh, uh, and and this is something that he changed from the from the Roman laws to the Napoleon code laws that uh, started to 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 rule especially most part of the countries that he invaded and we are uh, the the baby born what we can say of the Napoleon and the French or the Republic reforms of Europe not uh, United States United, French helped United States in the independence war of United States but uh, especially the the republics of Latin America and especially Brazil what we, I what I can say because when we had our republic we could choose between the liberal American way to follow or the positivism of Augusto Conte Augusto Conte uh, the positivism that is the philosophy that uh, builds and created our republic so uh, what I can say that is Bra that Brazil not only because the the Portuguese royal family came here uh, as a consequence of the Napoleon's invasion of Portugal but our even our republic system is based based on the French system and I think that we can't for example put in an opposition uh, the liberals against the positives and uh, a face a, a fake uh, antagonic a fake opposition because we are all Democrats and we all believe in the Republic and especially in democracy even if we have to avoid new emperors that consider themselves the guardians of the Constitution and the guardians of the even if they consider themselves the guardians of the cost Constitution and the guardians of the freedom uh, and when they, they have the concept that freedom they give freedom to the people and it's not the Constitution or even the relations between people that builds the society uh, these leaders they contributed in history with some things in certain ways but we almost have to afford and follow the real freedom that is not based in despotic leaders Napoleon Bonaparte he has a problem in his stomach I think he he had ulcer and it was one of the causes of his death and I have this painting in my living room it's very famous this painting the name is May 3rd of 1808 when the Napoleon troops invaded Madrid in Spain and they executed all the resistance all the Spaniards the Spanish resistance and this painting was made by Francisco de Goya I saw this picture in the Prados Museum in Madrid a few years ago